The midnight train. In the bitter cold of January 1982, the small town of Hanover, Vermont was gripped by an enigma that would haunt its residents for years to come. The local newspaper, the Hanover Herald, carried the headline, Mysterious Disappearance on the Midnight Express. As the story went, every Friday night the Midnight Express, a train that had run through Vermont's picturesque landscapes for over five decades, would pass through the town. Its powerful whistle, a familiar sound for the townsfolk. But on this particular Friday, things took a grim turn. As dawn broke on Saturday, news spread that six passengers, all locals known to the community, had inexplicably vanished during the journey. The last confirmed sighting of this group was when they boarded the train, chattering and laughing, unaware of the fate that awaited them. But the most perplexing detail was the location of their disappearance, the old Harrow Station. This station had been out of operation since the late 1950s, its platforms overtaken by weeds and its buildings bearing the scars of time. No scheduled stops were ever made there, and the train drivers had strict instructions to bypass it. The families of the missing passengers were distraught. They couldn't fathom why their loved ones would disembark at such a desolate place. As the sun set that evening, the townspeople gathered, lanterns in hand forming search parties. But the station, cloaked in shadows and whispers of its forgotten past, seemed to jealously guard its secrets. The mystery of the Midnight Express had just begun. Mike Collins, a rugged trucker in his early 40s, was no stranger to the odd hours of his profession. On that fateful Friday night, as the world slept, Mike was hauling a load of timber from the neighboring town. Deciding to rest his weary eyes, he'd parked his truck on a secluded road near Harrow Station. The station, with its broken windows and nature's overgrowth, had always been an eerie backdrop, but Mike, having seen his share of desolate places, never paid it much mind. But that night, as the moon hung low, casting silvery beams upon the landscape, Mike witnessed something he'd never forget. From his truck's cabin, he saw the Midnight Express slowing down, an unusual sight given its history of bypassing harrows. What was even more startling was the dim light that began to emanate from the seemingly abandoned station. As the train came to a halt, the carriage doors slid open, releasing a soft cloud of steam. Through the mist, Mike could discern the figures of the six passengers. Their faces, illuminated by the train's internal lights, carried expressions of confusion and apprehension. But what sent chills down Mike's spine was the sight of a seventh figure draped in shadows, standing on the platform seemingly awaiting the passengers. This figure, taller and leaner than the rest, gestured to the group, leading them towards the old station building. Frozen in disbelief, Mike instinctively reached for his CB radio only to find it mysteriously dead. By the time he mustered the courage to approach the station, both the train and the shadowy figure had vanished, leaving behind only the chilling silence of the night. The town of Hanover had always prided itself on its close-knit community, and the mysterious disappearances sent shockwaves through its streets. By Saturday afternoon, local authorities, led by Sheriff Anderson, a stern man with years of service under his belt, had launched a full-scale investigation. The old Harrow station became the epicenter of their efforts. Upon arriving at the station, the investigative team was met with an unsettling stillness, broken only by the distant cawing of crows. The platform, covered in layers of grime, gave no indication of the recent activity Mike had described. However, inside the train, a different story unfolded. The seats the passengers had occupied were still warm, and scattered around were personal belongings. A scarf, a half-drunk cup of coffee, a novel left open to a page, Sheriff Anderson ordered a sweep of the area. They combed through every inch of the station, from the ticket booth filled with dust-covered artifacts to the long-forgotten storage rooms. In one such room, they stumbled upon a peculiar sight, a fresh set of footprints leading to a wall. On closer inspection, they noticed the faint scent of burning wood emanating from behind it. The town's records revealed that a fire had ravaged the station in the 1950s, sealing off certain sections. Was it possible that there were hidden chambers yet to be discovered? As days turned into nights and nights into days, the town waited with bated breath. Rumors began to swirl, with some older residents whispering tales of the station's haunted past. All the while, the families of the missing clung to hope, praying for a breakthrough in the case that had turned their lives upside down. In the heart of Hanover, sitting on a porch surrounded by a garden of wilting roses, was Mrs. Eleanor Whitley a frail woman of 87. 
Her cloudy eyes held the weight of countless memories. As news of the investigation spread, whispers about the old station master's connection to Harrow Station reached her ears, and she felt compelled to share the tale. One evening, as twilight cast its golden hue, Sheriff Anderson paid a visit to Mrs. Whitley. Pouring tea into delicate porcelain cups, she began her story. The old station master, Albert Harrow, was a man of stern demeanor and unwavering dedication to his work. The station wasn't just his workplace, it was his entire world. Day in and day out, he'd ensure that the trains ran on time, treating the railway and its passengers with utmost respect. However, tragedy struck when a group of unruly passengers in a bout of drunken revelry caused a fire that consumed a part of the station. Albert, in his valiant attempt to do see the flames, suffered several burns. While the physical wounds healed over time, the emotional scars ran deep. Feeling betrayed by the very passengers he served, Albert became reclusive, and stories of his strange behaviors began to circulate. He was often seen late at night, wandering the platforms, muttering about, respecting the rails. Mrs. Whitley's voice wavered as she recounted the fateful night when Albert was found dead amidst the charred remains of his beloved station. The cause of his death remained a mystery, but many believed his spirit never left Harrow's. Sheriff Anderson, a man of logic, listened intently. But as the shadows grew longer, a chill ran down his spine. Could the spirit of the old station master be seeking retribution for the sins of the past? The search at Harrow Station continued relentlessly. On the fourth day, amidst the rubble of a collapsed storage room, Deputy Clark stumbled upon an old tape recorder, its exterior coated with years of dust and decay. Intrigued, he brought it to Sheriff Anderson's makeshift command center set up near the station. Upon cleaning it, they realized it was a model from the late 70s, a stark contrast to the antiquity of its surroundings. Curiosity peaked, the team gathered as Sheriff Anderson pressed play. A crackling silence ensued, followed by the unmistakable hum of a train in motion. The background was filled with distant chatter and laughter, presumably of the missing passengers. Suddenly, the ambient noise was interrupted by a deep, raspy voice that seemed to belong to an elderly man. Respect the rails and always respect the rails. The voice grew more frantic. They never understood. They never cared. The chilling monologue was punctuated by the haunting sound of the Midnight Express's whistle, after which there was a prolonged silence. And then, as if whispered directly into the recorder, the voice concluded, they will understand now. The tape ended, leaving the room enveloped in an oppressive silence. Everyone exchanged uneasy glances, feeling the weight of the implications. The voice bore an uncanny resemblance to the descriptions of Albert Harrow's, as recounted by Mrs. Whitley. Deputy Clark decided to examine the tape further, hoping to find any clues or timestamps. To his surprise, the label on the cassette read, January 21st, 1982 the very night of the passenger's disappearance. The tape recorder, a seemingly innocuous find and had added another layer to the enigma, making the authorities wonder if they were dealing with something far beyond the realms of the ordinary. As the days grew shorter and the nights colder, the urgency to find answers intensified. Armed with blueprints of the station from the town archives, the investigation team decided to probe deeper into the sealed sections of Harrow Station. The footprints leading to the wall and the lingering scent of burnt wood were clear indications that there was more to the station than met the eye. Using pickaxes and crowbars, a team of workers began to chip away at the wall, revealing an entrance to a dimly lit tunnel. The air was thick with age and the oppressive weight of secrets long buried. Holding lanterns, Sheriff Anderson and his deputies ventured into the darkness. The tunnel, lined with old railway ties and rusted tracks, led them to an underground chamber. The chamber, circular in shape, was unlike anything they had imagined. At its center stood a corroded railway turntable, its purpose in such a location baffling. But what truly sent shivers down their spines was the arrangement of six empty chairs, each placed equidistant from the other, forming a perfect circle around the turntable. Resting on each chair was a single item, a pair of glasses, a wallet, a locket, a hat, a diary, and a watch. Each item unmissackably belonged to one of the missing passengers. On the farthest wall of the chamber hung a large, aged portrait of a stern-looking man, eyes piercing through the dime light. The plaque beneath read, Albert Harrow, Station Master, 1920-1958. The discovery of the chamber raised more questions than answers, 
Was this a sanctum of reverence or retribution? What rituals or events had taken place here? And most importantly, where were the missing passengers? The puzzle of Harrow Station grew more intricate and the race against time became even more desperate. The eerie find in the underground chambers spread through Hanover like wildfire. As the townsfolk whispered speculations and theories, Mike, the trucker who had witnessed the strange events, found himself grappling with unsettling dreams. Each night, the shadowy figure from the platform beckoned him, leading him deeper into the labyrinthine tunnels of Harrow Station. One evening, after yet another restless night, Mike decided to confide in Father O'Malley, the town's respected priest. Sitting in the dimly lit confessional, Mike recounted the haunting visions, the disembodied voice echoing, the time is nigh, the circle must be completed. Father O'Malley, a man of deep faith, yet open to the mysteries of the world, recognized the gravity of Mike's revelations. Delving into the church's old records, he stumbled upon a forgotten tale. Albert Harrow, before his tenure as the station master, had once sought the church's help. Distraught over the tragic death of his wife on the train tracks, he'd tried to communicate with her spirit, dabbling in rituals that skirted the boundaries of the natural and supernatural. The priest believed that Albert's spirit was trapped between realms, his desire for closure making him tethered to Harrow Station. The missing passengers and now Mikey were pounds in a game that sought to mend the fractured circle of a ritual gonauri. Realizing the urgency, Father O'Malley and Mike decided to confront the restless spirit. Armed with holy relics and a determination to set things right, they prepared to venture into the heart of Harrow Station, hoping to bring an end to the torment and free the souls ensnared in this chilling web of the past. The night of the ritual arrived, its atmosphere thick with anticipation. As the clock struck midnight, the town of Hanover fell into an eerie silence, punctuated only by the distant howl of the wind. Father O'Malley, Mike, and a select group of townsfolk gathered at Harrow Station, their lanterns casting long shadows on the derelict walls. Guided by the priest's knowledge and Mike's visceral connection to the events, they made their way to the underground chamber. At the center, the turntable began to rotate slowly, its rusty joints groaning under the strain. Father O'Malley began to chant an ancient prayer, its words resonating through the chamber, creating a harmonious rhythm with the turntable's movement. As the chanting grew louder and the turntable faster, a spectral figure materialized before them. The unmistakable visage of Albert Harrow, his eyes filled with a mix of rage and sorrow, locked onto Mike's. The room's temperature plummeted and the air grew dense. The ghostly figure pointed towards the chairs and one by one the missing passengers began to appear, their expressions dazed and confused. With a final powerful chant from Father O'Malley, a blinding light engulfed the chamber. When the light faded, both Albert's spirit and the turntable had vanished. In their place stood the six passengers, unharmed and with no memory of their time in captivity. The town hailed Mike and Father O'Malley as heroes. Harrow's Station, once a place of mystery and dread, became a symbol of the town's resilience and unity. While the Midnight Express continued its journeys, the tales of that fateful winter night became a part of Hanover's legacy, a reminder of the thin line between the world of the living and the mysteries of the beyond. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Write in the comments what you think about this story.